So today we're going to be painting dandelion dust. What's great about this painting is you can really tailor it and make it your own just by changing some of the colors or maybe the composition of the painting. But to start, we're going to start off with our number five brush. And we're going to be using three colors to make this background color. And we'll start at the top and then work our way down. So the first color we'll start with, we're going to use three parts white. So all that means is I'll take a big scoop of my white and I will put it in the center of my palette. Then I'm going to rinse my brush just by tapping it in the bottom of the cup. And for now, we can just blot the excess water off. And then I'm going to use two parts blue. So what that means, just a little bit less blue. Put that as close to the white as you can. Rinse your brush again. And then one part yellow. So just a little bit less of our yellow than the other three colors. A little bit of yellow. And then we're going to mix that together in the center. And I always say to keep that pile as small as you can because this is going to be the only palette you're going to get today. So you don't want to take up all your white space on step one. So we're going to mix that together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush into my water cup a few times to really try and thin out that paint. So like I said, acrylic is a water-based paint, so we want to use a lot of that water to water it down. And this is the color we're going for, but if it's not exactly like this, it's okay. You know, all that matters in the end is that you like the color. So we're going to start at the top, and I'm going to be using the flat side of the brush. So this is the flat side. I'm going to be going back and forth all the way across. Just be careful, too, like if your brush has a lot of water, you can always kind of use the side of the palette to squeeze that water out so that you're not flinging paint on your neighbor or their painting. You also want to use this color to wrap all the edges. So you would use this to paint the top, wrap the sides, and we'll be slightly changing the color as we go down just by adding more white to it. But keep watering down your paint. If you start to notice that, so if you start to see it looking a little dry like this, it's good to get a little more water and paint on your brush and then just keep going. Because what that is, it's an indication that you've just run out of paint and water and it's getting kind of dry. So after we cover about a third of the top, I'm just going to continue to add more white to this color. And if you're not going to rinse your brush, it's always good to at least pull the paint out from the side rather than dipping your dirty brush right into the middle of your palette. So we're just lightening the color slightly as we go down. And we want to overlap that previous color so that we're not left with stripes or blocks of color. We want this to be a soft gradient of just getting lighter as we get to the bottom. One thing too, you know, if it's seeming kind of streaky to you, if you just go from one side all the way to the other, that can help to really smooth it out rather than going like this because you'll see those stop start brush strokes. Also with this five brush, if it sheds a little bit on your painting, you know, you just got to remove those bristles before they dry on there. Okay, so I'm starting to run out of my color. I'm just going to remix that again. But this time adding more white because we're using the lighter version. Always rinsing in between, mixing colors. Always watering down your paint. Water is really one of the biggest things that I think people don't realize when they're painting with acrylic is that you want to use a lot of water, especially for this type of soft gradient background. Okay, so now I have about a third left to do and I just want to change the color, making it a little more um, green. And to do that, you just add more yellow now to your color. So, let's see, I have my existing color. I'll rinse my brush. I'm going to just add more yellow to it. So you can see how that just turns it a little more green. And that would be the color that I would use to paint the bottom edge of the canvas. Continue wrapping your edges as you go along. 
If you are getting drips, it could just be an indication that you're not using enough paint and too much water. And if you ever run out of your colors, you can always get one of the assistants to bring you more paint just by raising your hand. Sometimes the easiest way to get this bottom edge too is just to rest your painting on the ledge of the easel. That way you're able to just get a nice clean stroke along the bottom. Or you can always just rotate your painting once it's dried a little bit to get that bottom edge. So I'm just going to give this a couple minutes to dry before we move on to our next step. So always make sure in between steps when you're not using your brushes, you want to keep those brushes in your water cup. If you ever leave a brush out, the paint will dry on there, and then it's pretty much non-usable. Okay, so it looks like everybody had a chance to get their backgrounds done. They look awesome, and we gave them a few minutes to dry, so we're going to go ahead and get started on step two. After our background, we're going to be using our number three brush. So what this brush is, it's a flat brush, and so in order to load that brush, you want to be pulling the paint out to the side. And we're going to be starting off with brown. So what I'm going to do, rather than you know jamming your brush straight down like this, you want to actually pull the brush out to the side of the palette and flip it back and forth on the edges. And that's basically like sharpening a knife. You're going to flip the brush back and forth, and that's how you're going to want to load the brush every time for this step. And always make sure that you add water to it as well. So I'm going to be starting at the bottom. And it's important to the orientation of your brush. You don't want to be at an angle. You don't want to be on the flat side. You want to be straight on, perpendicular to your painting. So I'm going to be starting at the bottom and just really, really lightly kind of flicking up for the grass pieces. And as soon as I run out of paint, I go back into my water, reload the brush on the side of the palette, and start again. You'll notice too, if you push really hard, you're gonna get a thicker line. So I'm barely applying any pressure as I do this so that I can get really thin pieces of grass. And it's okay if it pulls up a little bit of the background color. We want this to be more muted anyway. And you want the grass to be like super crazy. You don't wanna just have a couple pieces. The more you have, the more interest it's gonna be having them overlap each other, going in different directions, different heights. And then if your brush ever starts to get really thick, if it gets full of paint, I always suggest to take a napkin, hold on to the metal part of the brush, and you want to squeeze all the excess paint out of the brush and reform it back to that nice knife edge that we started with. Reload the brush on the side, and then add some more. Because after a few brush strokes, your brush may get full of paint and it's going to be a lot harder to get that really thin edge. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to rinse the brush. Okay, so we're going to move on to our next step using the same brush, the number three brush, and we're going to be mixing up a combination of white, yellow, and orange. But for this step, you want to use two parts white, two parts yellow, to one part orange. So scoop of white, scoop of yellow, rinse the brush. And then just a little bit of orange. Orange definitely goes a long way when you're using these lighter colors. So it's always better to add a little bit because you can always add more. It's a lot easier to add more paint for it with a darker color than it is to do it the opposite way. So I'm just going to use the side of the palette to wipe off some of that excess paint, just like on the last step. You could also always use a napkin. And we're going to start to add some of the yellow grass pieces just overlapping the previous color, same idea. Maybe going a little bit higher on some of the edges. Don't forget to add water if it starts to get a little dry. It's okay if the water isn't clean, you know, maybe my water is green, but I'm painting on a green background. So the color of the water really doesn't make much of a difference. All right, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to rinse my brush and move on to my next step, which is going to be my stems. So this may be where you want to do some measuring. I'm going to use the same brush, number three brush, again, loading it on the knife edge, pulling it out to the side, making sure I add some water to it. 
And the great thing is there's no right or wrong amount of dandelions to have. So if you wanted to do less than I have or more, that's definitely your option. I'm going to start with the one on the right side and then move my way across. That way for this little one, if I you know, run out of space, that's okay. So let's just say you want to give some measurements. This one could be, it's the length of the stick, so it's 10 inches. So I would come over here, maybe put a little dot at the top. That just gives me a marker of where I want to go. And it doesn't matter if you start at the top or the bottom. And again, you don't want to push really hard. I'm going super light. The harder you push, the thicker that line's going to be. And you may need to go over it again. And then we've got another one in between the taller ones. So that one is about five inches. So come over here. You know, you can use the measurements or it can just be a helpful tool. And then we've got a really big one. I know that's going to be way longer than my measuring stick. So I'm just going to think about, you know, whenever you're doing a dandelion, you want to think about, okay, if my stem stops here, then how big is that dandelion actually going to be above that? So I want to make sure I leave ample space for that up at the top. And I always also suggest kind of doing an imaginary line in your head before you start putting a line on there. So I could say, okay, I want this to go and maybe end down here. Doing those little things are going to help with composition. And then we have this one that crosses back over. And then I have my little tiny one here, which I said in the beginning was about four inches. So now that we have the uh, the basic stem mark, what I want to do next is go in and add these little um, pieces that sort of follow the shape of the stem. And I'll be using the same color of brown with the number three brush. So what we're going to be doing next is just adding these little curved lines that go alongside the stem. And one thing with that is if you're using this flat brush, you're going to have to make sure that you turn the brush as you're going. Because if you didn't turn it, then you're going to end up on the flat side of the brush. You could also practice on the butcher paper how you turn the brush and feeling the different pressure of using the flat side of the brush. You could also always switch to the one or two brush if you're more comfortable with a smaller brush. So I'm going to go really, really lightly and I'm going to be turning my brush as I go along so that I stay on that knife edge. And then I'm going to go back and add in these little leaves that are coming off of those. So same brush and you just want to do those real quick. You just apply the paint, apply the bristles to the canvas and just pull off real fast. If your brush starts to kind of fray at the end, remember you can always take a napkin, squeeze the paint out, reform it, back in the water, a little more paint. All right, so now we are ready to actually go in and start putting the first layer of our dandelions. It's going to be several series of layers, different colors, and we're going to start with our number one brush, and we're going to actually just be using straight white. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little more white, and you're not going to need to use any water for these steps. You're going to literally take the one brush, and you're going to just dip it straight into the white on the tip, and then you go straight on the the painting. So I'm going to be starting with the exterior ring of the dandelion before I go in and add all the different colors in the middle. So this will give me a good idea of the size that I want to have. So I'm just, think of like stippling, just tap, tap, tap on the tip of the brush. So I like to get all the, um, the exterior circles made. That way I have a better idea of the composition of the painting before I go in and really start to add all those details to each individual dandelion. Because I may say, oh, well, this one needs to be bigger or smaller. So part of the reason I don't use a lot of water on this step, too, is because I want the thickness of the paint to come out, and this area of the painting will have a little more texture than the rest of it. So when you use a lot of water, it can thin out the paint but for some of the details, you want to have that extra thickness. 
So what I'm going to do next is start to create that dust effect. And what you have to think about is it kind of floating. So it's not going to be a direct shot. It's going to be a little more wavy and organic is the way that it's floating off of the dandelion. So just don't think of a straight line. You want to think of something like smoke or just something that's floating and disintegrating. It's also good to have areas that are more dense, some that are more sparse, different size blotches just by the harder you push, the thicker that's going to be, the lighter I go, the thinner that's going to be. So as you're filling in the little dust, you can also start to fill in the dandelions in the center a little more as well. And if your brush ever starts to get really flat, you can always use the side of the palette to roll the brush, get back more of that point that you started with. You could also use your fingers to twist that into more of a point as well. I always suggest to like kind of step back from your painting, check it out, see how it's going. When you're looking at it so close up, it's going to look different than if you're a few feet back. So I'm going to start to fill in more of the center of the dandelion, but I don't want that to be as heavy as the exterior shell that I created. So I'm just going to start to add a few dots in the middle, but keeping that a little lighter. Okay. So that's good for my white for now. I will come back at the very end and use more white as my finishing touch. But I want to go ahead and start to add some of the other colors. So I'm just rinsing this one brush. This is going to be the brush I'll use for the remainder of the class. And the next color I'm going to be using is going to be lots of white. So I would say five parts white to one part brown, one part red. So it, may, it will make kind of a mauve color. So here we go, scoop of the white, clean spot on the side of the palette. You can always use the side of the palette as a mixing spot. You could also use your butcher paper as an extended palette. So we've got this pink color. Again, I'm going to use the side of the palette to roll off some of that excess paint. And then I'm going to be using this color primarily in the middle of the dandelion, maybe a little bit in the dust, a little bit. Uh, in the exterior shell, but it's primarily in the center. So I'll add a little bit up here into my dust and throughout. The great thing with these steps is you can always go back and add more. The next step I'm going to be using the same base color that I just used and I'm just going to be adding more brown to it. So again, when you're adding a darker color to a lighter color, it's always good to add a little bit. You can kind of get an idea of what it'll look like, and you can always add a little bit more if it's not dark enough. So that's pretty good. I wanted it to be more of a mauve color, not too dark. And I'm going to be doing the same exact thing with this color. Just kind of going in, make that a little darker. Sometimes it'll look different on your palette than it does on the painting. So a little bit more brown. Okay. I wanted to have more contrast between the last color. All right. So I'm going to rinse my brush again. So there's going to be another color that it's not really that obvious unless you're up close. But what I use is I use my background color that I started with and I add a lot of white to it. So what that does, it just creates just a real subtle hints of the dust more on the left side and kind of blossoming out from the center of the um, dandelion. So what I'll do is I'll use, just mix this right on top of the first color we started with and just add a lot more white to it. So it's very similar to the first color, just a lot lighter. And if you've run out of that first color, you would just want to remix it using some blue and yellow and a lot of white. So this color goes more on the left side, maybe some smaller dots, so really, really lightly tapping. You can also mix this color throughout the little trail that we've created over here. The more variations of colors that we add, the more depth that the overall painting is going to have in the end. 
So rather than using just white, which is probably what you'll see when you look at that, this painting, if you get up close, you're going to see all these other variations in between. So now I'm just going to go in with my white as my finishing touch. And so I'll be using the same brush, number one brush, lots of white, really trying to get a variety of small dots, big dots. If your painting is dry, sometimes it is good to rest your hand against your canvas and that way you have a little more control over your brush. You can get really tiny dots. But you always have to be careful that you don't have paint on your hand because if you do that, then you're going to have paint on your canvas. We can also overlap some of those darker splotches we made in the middle. That's going to soften that and just bring the whole painting together. So we're just overlapping a lot of what's already there, adding some more variations of the sizes of the dandelion dust. And you'll notice the two paintings are not exactly the same. Everybody's painting is going to be different. That's what makes us all unique. We all have different painting styles. It's always interesting to walk around the room and you see everybody took the same class, but everybody has a different take on the interpretation of the painting. But that's what makes it fun. So you really want to make sure that the edges of the initial dandelion shape that we made are more defined. You don't want that to get lost in all of the dust. So I'm going back and making sure that that area is reading as a thicker ring compared to all the other dust that's coming out. Making sure that I overlap that darker color that I made earlier in the middle. You can also have some dust coming from the left side of the painting, as if there were more dandelions over here. You can also just have some random little dots throughout some of the negative space just to fill the canvas. And definitely with this type of painting, you see that I keep leaning back. It's good to see it from farther away because it's more of that impressionistic style, at least for the dandelion. So when you're this close to it, it just looks like a bunch of dots. But if you step away, you'll see more of the definition of the painting. It's not meant to be viewed this close ever. So this is the type of stuff you could just keep going with forever. But when you could come to a point where you feel like you've had enough and it's looking pretty good, you probably want to sign your painting. And so to do that, I would recommend the number one brush. And it's always good to, like I said, roll the brush in the paint. You can use any color. You can sign it anywhere. That's your personal choice. Sometimes people will sign on the sides or even the back of the painting. I always like to sign in the bottom corner. And this is definitely a step that I would recommend maybe practicing. If you've never signed with a paintbrush, you can practice your name or your initials on the butcher paper. I'm going to use white and sign here in the corner. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and definitely like our page. That way you'll get to see all the photos from the class tonight. Thank you again and hope to see you soon.